Okay, it is March 31st, and this is the NBA show! Woo-hoo! Our guest on the show, Brian Halligan. All Let's right. give it up for Brian. <laughs> okay, remember to subscribe to us at www.thembashow.com. Our What's headline our headline today? McGill has been fined for raising tuition 1,882%. Two million dollar fine. That is correct. So the government of <laughs> Quebec um, is fining McGill, that's in Montreal, their Desutel School of Management. They're fining them two million dollars for raising tuition, get this, from $1,700 a year to $32,000 a year. Woo, that stings in the wallet. Is that American dollars or moose money? <laughs> So the Canadian dollar is called the loonie, actually, <laughs> um, and who cares? It's a 1,882% yeah, increase yeah, I'm in sure, tuition. I'm sure the students are just pissed. So what's weird about this? They're not. They're not. The, st- the students are actually thrilled. So McGill is <laughs> what? Yeah, no. So McGill has been having a really hard time being competitive internationally. Yeah. Things got so bad five years ago. They were unranked in the Financial Times rankings. Not good. And they had to. They had to lay off a third of their tenured faculty five years ago. Whoa. Yes. Why are there tenured faculty? Yes. Who's in charge of not meeting with students? <laughs> <laughs> so what happens to all these ex-Canadian tenured faculty? Do, do not worry. Uh, it's Canada, they get the usual stuff, they get their free health care, they smoke weed, they get gay married. <laughs> you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a Canadian thing. Wait, so hold on, let me get this straight. Let's, let's, let's run the numbers on this here real quick. Got my, uh, my, my financial brain here with me today. What's that, your TI-12? <laughs> hey, this has a lot of functions on it here. <laughs> All right, so let me, let me get this straight. So yeah. tuition used to be $1,700. $1,700 and a year. And there's 60 students. Yes, in the program. All right, so that is... The entire student body of McGill, the entire student body paid $102,000 in tuition I paid more for my MBA than the entire student body of McGill. I've never felt so alive. I am a true American consumer. Spend our way out of anything. So so the school said they had to raise prices to compete compete internationally. Um, And it's actually actually helping. So they're up to 57th on the Financial Times ranking from being not ranked at all. Um, but what Quebec has said is that this violates Quebec's equal access to education law by raising tuition so high. And so the government of Quebec is fining them for being more competitive. So this is a statement that they're making to the government. Yes. They're, they're trying to like communicate something. Oh yes. You, you wanna, know what? <laughs> you want to know what kind of statement I think what do you that th- is? What do you think that Here's thing? the statement that I think they're trying to make. <laughs> well, Miro, okay, so the human interest story is fascinating, (laughs) but let's get back to brass tacks, okay? Okay. I'm in finance, I'm a finance guy. Let's talk about what this means in just pure numbers. Okay. Okay, so let's run some of these things. Okay, is this, what I want to know when I'm thinking about making a crazy decision, like, is this going to be NPV positive? Okay. Okay, so what are we talking about here? So what are we losing per year? So they're going to lose 1.2 million in government subsidies every year. Gone. Got it, got it, okay. And, uh, you know, what what about this one-time fine? Uh, two million dollars one time. Okay, two million. Yep. Uh huh. And uh, so, what are we gaining from the students? Thirty. So it's up 2, to thirty. 000, so it's about two million a year in revenue. Sixty students. And I've got it. The IRR on this deal: forty-four point three three eight percent. And how did you get that so fast, Tom? Just like uh, like I always do. I'm in finance. This is this is my thing. I ran the model beforehand, and I pretend like I came up with the numbers on the spot. <laughs> Okay, so, well, but look, at least we can agree it's really NPV positive, and I guess... Very NPV positive. Yeah, your numbers aside, it makes sense, because all you have to do is take the $2 million hit once, and then you're making money every year after that. You're making more money in tuition than you lost from the government. Yeah. So, you know, so all you have to do is get through that $2 million, and you're you're clear sailing. And I have a solution for that. How to get through that $2 million? And what's your solution? Don't pay the fine. What do you mean? Don't pay the fine. I mean, it's like a, it's like a parking ticket. It's like if I'm not getting the government subsidy, you just put that parking ticket in the glove compartment. That's how you handle that one. <laughs> Dude, it's a government fine. That would be illegal. <laughs> Dude, it's Canada. Oh, for the love. You're basically you're talking about the government going. Rogue. You're talking about a, an entire business school going rogue. <laughs> well, you know, sometimes you got to do that. But speaking of rogues, ha- handsome rogues. <laughs> our guest on the show today. Who's that? Who's that going to be? Our guest on the show today is Brian Halligan. Give it up. Ladies, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> for you, Brian, for you, we're, we're well. We're well. Oh, okay. So Brian is the CEO of HubSpot. 
So I, so HubSpot is an all-in-one. That was a good start. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, why don't you tell us a little bit about HubSpot? HubSpot is marketing software. My feeling is that the way people market stuff is just broken, fundamentally broken. People send emails, bam, and they do cold calls, and they advertise to people. And humans are sick and tired of all that. We're blocking it out with caller ID. We're blocking it out with spam protection. We're blocking it out with our DVRs. So HubSpot's created sort of a new marketing software to help companies kind of transform the way they market to match the way humans actually shop and learn and buy today through Google and blogs and social media, stuff like that. So it's a internet marketing software company. So you I, you guys are super cool. And I like I cannot tell you how excited I am to have you here. So you guys just raised $32 million um, from some of the biggest, absolute biggest names <laughs> like in venture capital. You got it from Sequoia. You got it from the folks who were in before Matrix, General Catalyst. Salesforce.com is invested in you. Like you guys are one of the hottest startups in Boston, the U.S., like... The universe. The universe! <laughs> We're super hot right now. If he starts humping, you can just bonk him on the nose, <laughs> by the way. Just <laughs> so, here's what I want to know. So, you just raised two and the rumored valuation is around $200 million. You said the company's on a run rate for about $25 million in revenue per year. And with a $200 million valuation, folks to pay back, that means we're looking at, like, HubSpot's going to have to be worth a billion dollars. I can't That's money that gets me excited. <laughs> I, I, I can't sleep at night. And I, you know, I don't even work there and I can't sleep at night thinking about that. I like see. what how what is how, help me. <laughs> uh, I think a billion would be interesting, but um, I think a hundred billion would be a lot more interesting. Oh. We're trying to build a sustainable you know, very interesting sort of West Coast style company here on the East Coast, kind of like a Google or an Amazon or a Salesforce.com. hundred billion, oh, I'm going to put my jacket on. <laughs> and I, I, I kind of feel like every company on the planet needs to change the way they market because humans have changed the way they kind of live and shop and learn. So we want to build a very broad based uh, solution that any company in the world could use. So we're very ambitious. We want to fundamentally change the way people do marketing and there's a giant market for us and that's why we're raising money from google yeah. and salesforce.com and all these guys we want to we're, we're swinging for the fences sweet wow yeah. that is yeah. that is an awesome yeah. <laughs> so let me, awesome let me ask you a question that many of our viewers have so hopefully we don't fuck it up yeah <laughs> <laughs> speaking of that i'm uh, so oh, wait. i my hopefully heart we don't <laughs> <get up. laughs> my heart is an entrepreneurship okay. all right but I can tell. By but I, yeah, yeah, the suit, you know. This <laughs> you one, but I've got this offer from Deutsche Bank, 150 yes. guaranteed comp with another 50 bonus. Save me, man! I will sign this thing. Yeah, I've I, got it right here. I'll sign it right now. Because you, because you hire MBAs. We do. You actually hire a lot for for, for, a, for a technology and a start. You know, as a startup, you hire a lot of MBAs on your yep. team. Yep. The company was founded out of Sloan by two MBAs. It turns out, and so you we get, actually you like, being one of them. Yes, I was one of them. <laughs> I assume they're both finance guys. Uh, they were not finance guys. No. Here's how I think about it. Yep. The secret is one of my favorite philosophers is a guy named James Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> and he's got a song, that he says, The secret of life is about enjoying the passage of time. And I just don't think you're going to enjoy the passage of time wellowing away in the bowels of Deloitte and Touche. You're going to be miserable. Well, it depends on how much you spend. What? It depends on how much you spend. Ah, it's just going to be miserable. Whatever, I've never met a happy consultant. I've never met a happy banker. Whatever you do, don't go into banking or consulting. Join a startup. It's fun. And you want to do two things in your life. You want to get a job you love, and you want to get a good mattress, because you spend 99% <laughs> of your life either sleeping on that mattress or working in that job. And okay. so what, and what kind of MBAs do you, do you look for? Like, when I look at you, I think, so, you know, you, you embody, like, the Brooks Brothers CEO catalog. <laughs> you must have ordered yourself from there. Like, yes. what do you look for in an MBA? Uh, do they have to look like you? The, 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 which we, is we exceptionally good looking. We could care less about how the person looks. <laughs> uh, um, we tend to, 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 to lean towards the geekier uh, yep. MBAs. All right. You two were uh, interns this summer. <laughs> You're very much emblematic. Dorky uh, fellows like yourselves are perfect fits. Uh, take it easy, um, take it easy. <laughs> uh, often they, they were technical uh, before they went to business school so they're, they're sort of tweeners they've got some business and they've got some technical they can help translate things they can communicate well so we're looking for uh, someone on the geeky side of the MBA uh, spectrum cool. alright so yeah. if you want an MBA you want to get hired you want to buy an entrepreneurial company be a geek and how, <laughs> how do you set up your MBA curriculum to be that kind of geek that a company like you are looking for 
like here in MIT, there's the entrepreneurial track. I don't yep. know what they call it. Uh, yeah, but track. That's kind of what we look for is the entrepreneurial track. We like startup-y kind of people. We like to start mini startups inside of HubSpot and let people be, we call them mini CEOs yep. inside of the company where they can come up with their own idea and run their own project and have their own kind of mini P&L. So we like the entrepreneurial types who are hacker-ish and, and, and like to start things. We, we do, we're actually not trying to build this startup-y culture. We're trying to build this postmodern culture that's very attractive to Gen Y people. Yeah, right. And so right. part of that is we want to empower Gen Y people. I sort of feel like Gen Y people, they want to be inspired, they want to be empowered, and they think very differently than people with gray hair like me. So we're trying <laughs> to set the culture up that's very attractive to young, sort of ambitious, smart people in MBA programs. And one of the things that I have noticed that in all of the writings that come out of HubSpot, of which there are many, yep. HubSpot blogs. For instance, plug, such as your book, Inbound Marketing, <laughs> and your second book, Marketing Secrets of the Grateful Dead. <laughs> you can sign that to Miro Kaz uh, <laughs> okay. right, right, right after the show. So one good. of the things that you do is you, you track a lot of metrics, we do. which actually brings us to one of our segments on the show we like to call Jargon. And so our jargon for the week is Coca. Have you ever heard of this? Yeah, Coca-Cola. <laughs> You're drinking some right now. Coca. But seriously, what is Coca and why is it so important? Uh, Coca is the cost of customer acquisition and in and of itself it's not particularly interesting, but when paired with the total lifetime value of a customer, it turns out it's really interesting. And what I look for at HubSpot and other companies like ours is if it costs you X to acquire a customer, how long does it take you to pay back X? Like if it takes you two years to pay back your Coca, Eesh, that's not a great business. If it takes you six months to pay back your Coca, oh, you got something interesting. You should pour more uh, at the top. So your business is more than an aggregate. It's the sum of a bunch of little business. Each bit, each customer is a business. Yeah. You add them together. Exactly. And... Each customer has its own J-curve is the way I kind of think about it. And so it, it, it it's not just the payback, though. It's also the ratio between Coca and total lifetime value. So let's say your Coca... Careful, you're starting to sound geeky. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> let's say your Coca is X and your total lifetime value is 2x, it's not that interesting. What, what's what the number that you look for? Yeah. It should be, you know, 3, 4, 5x gets pretty interesting. Oh, um, yeah, if it's 5x, you should be hitting the gas harder and growing faster. Okay, so, yeah. all right. So MBAs, 5x coca. That's what you're, uh, that's what you're looking for. <laughs> Different kind of coca than you're probably thinking about. <laughs> all right, what, we, next segment, business school tip of the week. So Brian, what's your one tip to MBAs as yep. they think about going through their, their MBA curriculum? Um, to make their experience better. Yeah, I, 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 my co-founder at HubSpot did this. I didn't, but I would start. Let's say you wanted to be, uh, you wanted to work for Sam Adams Beer when you're graduating, right? Right. Uh, what I would do. Not a startup. <laughs> or a startup beer company. Let's say. Uh, <laughs> I would start writing a blog while I was in school. So every class you're in, write papers about it, start publishing your papers through your blog, and start building a you know a really big following. Do inbound marketing around your blog. Start building a big Twitter following. Create a LinkedIn group about beer, beer business, or whatnot. And what happens is you don't have to go out and look for a job from Heineken or Sam Adams or any of these places. They'll come find you. The CEO yeah. will trip over your articles in Google, will trip over them in Twitter. People will start forwarding to them. If it's very thoughtful, you can get pulled into your job. You don't have to go out and look right. for it. So that would be so my why, And is it important that that blog be focused on a single topic? Yeah. I think it is. You know, you, you, like what, when I read blogs in the person's writing about, let's say I read a, a startup blog and they start writing about, you know, the Portland Trailblazers or something. I'm like, come on already. And I get frustrated with it. Yeah, and right. I'm much more likely to unsubscribe. Because you if you're a reader, you want a niche top. That, that's do. why I subscribe, because it's Dude, Port online. Portland is where young people go to retire. <laughs> that is not my joke, but but I still love that line. Would you stick around for a little bit of bonus content uh, with us afterwards? I would love to stick cool. around you for can, a little bit. You can get uh, our bonus content uh, by subscribing to our newsletter at www.thembashow.com. Bonus <laughs> content! Members only. <laughs> Brian, what's on your radar for this weekend? Uh, what is, oh, uh, I'm doing this weird thing, I forgot what it's called. It's the Aspen Institute is having some conference in Boston and I'm going <laughs> to learn and expand my mind, You actually. get to do the coolest <laughs> things. Uh, Mira, what's on your radar? <laughs> yes, I, uh, my, my, <laughs> my wife's out of town, I'll be taking my first bike ride of the season. I'm tuning up the fixie and I'm headed out for a long ride. What about actually, you, Tom? I am moving, actually, so I'm unpacking boxes. I'm trying to find my cups and my headlight and all that kind of stuff. All right. I'm the real Tom Rose. I'm Miro Kaz. I'm Brian Halligan. And, and you've, you've been, been watching, watching the NBA show. show.